this is Elect Lady Vanessa Dalton, and welcome to another True Tuesday. So, Minister Elect Eric Edwards is coming back for another awesome lesson. So, you know what to do. Go grab your computer, your laptop, anything you look at to watch us, and don't forget your Bible. Let somebody know in your house that True Tuesday is on, and let's get into the Word. Good evening, saints of God. Thank you for joining us here on True Tuesday. Uh, we appreciate your attendance. And tonight I'm going to be coming from two different uh, scriptures. Both of them are related. So before we start, we're going to have a quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity to stand before you and to bring your word forth. Lord, just sit me aside. Let your word and your spirit flow through me to give the people something they need. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So we're going to start in Numbers. 21, 5 through 9, and then we're going to go to John 3, 14 through 15. Numbers 21, 5 through 9 says, And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on a pole, and so it was, if a, certain, if a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. John three fourteen through 15 says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him shall, should not perish, but have eternal life. Now, the incident with Israel happened after the Lord had helped them to defeat a Canaanite king who had ambushed the people and had taken many of their members uh, hostage. After the battle, they were moving from Mount Hor to go around Edom so that they wouldn't have to fight the Edomites on their way to the Promised Land. And so, as the Israelites did, they started to complain. This time, they're complaining about the route they had to take. So, in complaining about the route that they had to take, they again asked, well, have you brought us up out of Egypt to let us die in the wilderness? And then the manna that, Lord, that the Lord had given them to feed them, they called it loathsome bread. Now this is after they had been complaining about they didn't have bread to eat. So the Lord provided the manna for them and now it's loathsome to them. And because of their complaining and disrespecting what God had done for them, the provision he had made for them, he sent those serpents there as a punishment. But he also made a way of escape for them. Once they repented and realized and recognized and admitted that they had done wrong and they had Moses go to pray for them, the Lord sent, he sent a, a way of escape. He sent provision for them to be saved. So he makes the serpent, lifts it up in the midst of the camp, and anybody that looked at the serpent that had been bitten by one of the serpents could look on it and live and be healed. When he made that way of escape, he didn't just open the door and let them walk out. He did ask them to do something. And in John, we see that Jesus likens himself to that serpent. He refers back to it. So the same way that he made a way for the Israelites, Jesus is making a way for us. All we have to do is look up and be saved. Like I said, the Lord didn't just open the door and say, You're, everything's okay. Don't do anything. It's, it's all been forgiven. He gave them something to do. It's a simple thing, but in a lot of ways it's a hard thing. Because to get that salvation, they had to humble themselves. For us to be saved, we have to humble ourselves. We have to do the same thing that Israel did in the desert. We have to go out and look and say, Lord, we sinned. We sinned against you. We sinned against the things that you've given us. We've not appreciated what you've done for us. Lord, we sinned. I can't save myself, so Lord, save me. Look up and be saved. It's not any harder than that. But humbling yourself is a hard thing sometimes. It's not easy to say I'm wrong. It's not easy to say that I've lived a life that's sinful. It's not easy to say I can't save myself. We all think that we can handle everything, but we can't. But just like that fiery serpent in the wilderness, Jesus was lifted up on a cross to save you. But all you have to do to be saved is humble yourself, repent, and look up. 
It's not that hard, but it's a tough thing to do sometimes. But if you're out there tonight and you're living in a life of sin, if you know that you're not right, don't wait. Look up and be saved. Let the Lord save you. He came. He's reaching out his hand for you all day long. He's waiting for you. He came for you. He came for everybody, but he came for you especially. He wants you to be saved. It's not hard. Humble yourself. Repent of your sins. Ask him to come into your heart. Believe that he is the very son of God, that he died for you, that he was raised for you, and that he's going to come back to you. If you believe it in your heart and confess it in your mouth, you'll be saved. So please, as you're going through this life, don't suffer unnecessarily. Just look up. Look up and be saved. I thank you for your time tonight. I, ask, I hope that it's been a blessing to you. Uh, here at True Word Fellowship, we're located at 310 West Meadow Road in Eden, North Carolina. Our Sunday services start at 9 o'clock with, with our Sunday school and on at 10 o'clock with our regular service. And we have our True Tuesdays every Tuesday night unless there's a special circumstance. Uh, anytime you're in Eden and you want to come worship with us, we'll be more than glad to have you. And now we're going to go out and quick word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for the, the time we've been able to spend talking to the people. And Lord, we just thank you for your making a way of salvation for us and making a, a provision for us. And Lord, just let anybody out there that doesn't know you, Lord, let them come to you. Let them humble themselves, admit their wrongs, humble themselves, and look up so that you can save them, so you can raise them to life out of the death that they're in. And Lord, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your salvation. In Jesus' name I pray.